Hey book lovers, welcome back. It's a new video. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well. And if you're a book lover and you've been brought to this channel and you haven't subscribed, please do join the family. We talk about books here. We talk about everything else. We talk about women. We talk about empowering women. We talk about, we, we, we vlog. We talk about life, we talk about life issues, things, all of that. We talk about all that stuff. So if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. Welcome. It's good to see you. I don't remember, okay, what do you even mean? <laughs> I don't remember the last time I did a book wrap up. However, since that time, I haven't really read much. <laughs> I haven't really read much because it's just closing down the year has been a little bit, uh, hectic for me in terms of work and all of that and i am currently reading uh the vanishing half by Britt bennett i'm like 100 pages in so i'm not that far in and i don't i can't talk about it but i'm here to show you a wrap up of the books that i have read and i've read three books which is quite uh small in well in a month i feel like that's it's quite it's quite big but at the same time i just feel like oh, it hasn't been that much okay but we're gonna wrap these books up and then uh towards the end of this video i'm going to talk about my favorite uh top three top three i can't do top five no top three books that i absolutely loved this year so we're going to start with the first book that i read in november so we're doing them in the order of how i read them the first one is mexican gothic this is by sylvia moreno garcia i mean this was my f not my first but probably my second introduction to horror and this is gothic horror so it's it's, it's, it's on a completely different playing field and i was quite not quite impressed impressed i enjoyed it it was a good read um rating it out of five i would definitely give it maybe a three and a half out of five which is still a good rating for me so mexican gothic follows the life of noemi who is a young vibrant 22 23 year old um in 1950s mexico and she's just living her best life. She comes from quite a well-off family. And she's just really living her best life. Boys partying, all of that. Socialites, right? And one day her father receives a letter from her cousin, Catalina. Is it Catalina? I don't quite know. Yes, it's Catalina. And Catalina has written in that letter to her father that she would... Um, she feels like her husband is poisoning her and that she is worried for the safety of her life and that she would like uh, Noemi to help her. And of course, Noemi's father says, listen, girl, you got to go. You got to go there. You got to check what's going on with your cousin. OK, let me know. Report back. Tell me what's going on. So little did Noemi know that when she went there, she would definitely find things quite unsettling and quite strange um uh, without giving too much away i don't want to spoil this book but i feel like you need to read it to actually feel it this book is very very atmospheric when you're reading it you know as she pulls up to the house where the cousin lives the whole area is very misty. The house is standing on the top of a hill, very gothic. You can already tell. It's like the haunting of, of, of Hill House, you know? It's very gothic, it's, it's dark, it's misty. Um, the house is very old and it's got little, um, uh, um, what do you call those gothic? Is it masks or something, you know? It looks like a very olden day kind of um, archaic kind of vibe about it. Listen, very atmospheric. She notices when she gets there that the very strange things are happening in this house and, um, you know, starts having hallucinations, seeing this or that and the other. That's all I'm going to say about this book because I feel like you've got to read it to feel it. you got to read it to feel it. But it was, for me, um, it wasn't terrifying. It wasn't a horror novel like, oh my God. But there were moments where I found it extremely unsettling. Where I was just like, I would read it and be like, you know, and I would just put it down. But it it's quite an enjoyable read. 
quite unsettling, quite dark, um, but very, very enjoyable. So I gave it a three and a half out of five. Definitely nice introduction to gothic horror for me as opposed to just normal horror horror gore and what have you and then the next book that i read was a ah uh, if you're south african you know you know you know this is a family affair by sue nyati and oh man she had my heart she had my heart with this this is definitely a five out of five for me absolutely loved this book as you can see it's got tags down the side because i read it for uh the brown skin reads book club so of course i had a lot of phrases passages moments instances quotes that i absolutely loved coming out of this book this book follows the mafus I, I, I didn't remember the, 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 the surname. This book follows the Mafus, but more closely it follows the daughters of the Mafu family. Toliswa, Yandisa, and Zandile. And I, yeah, that's the order from eldest to youngest. But this book is a pure reflection on black, I don't know about uh, American or whatever, but on black African families and the dynamics, the different exchanges between family members, the different favoritism with children, um, you know, wanting parents wanting, you know, so much for their children that when their children don't do what they expected, they feel disappointed. And oh my gosh, there's a lot packed into this book that I can't. I, there's no way I could sit here and tell you and tell you what happens in this book because all I can say is that it follows the lives of these daughters. Um, the themes in this are amazing as well. You know, it tackles um, issues of you know marriage, you know the trials and tribulations of marriage and how your family members see you when you're grown and not married. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. How they see you when you're grown and not married, and the stereotypes, the generalizations. Um, you know, oh, just give him a baby. Maybe then he'll marry you. You know, things like that. If you're black, and more especially if you're African, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so it talks about those dynamics, you know, relationship dynamics between husband and wife, or partner and partner. Um, it just, it's beautifully told. It's exceptionally well written. It is, you know, secrets, lies, you know, things being hidden from family members and things not being spoken about, which is a, a that's a major black family thing. You know, we, we know that this happened, but we're not going to talk about it because we're not going to talk about it. You know what I mean? So, uh, the judgments and, I loved this book. Definite five out of five. Would I say it's one of my favorite reads of the year? I don't know. You're going to have to wait for the end of the video for that. But wow, exceptional writing. It's quite a chunky one, okay? And it's divided into three sections, if I'm not mistaken. Growth. What, 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 what? Decline. It's divided into, I think, three or four sections. I'm not going to go through it, but... It's so exceptionally well written. It's got exactly about 450 pages. So you must be prepared to read. But I feel like as a December read or a January read or whatever read, if you want just one book for the month, pick up this book. It's fantastic. Sunyati did an exceptional job with this. And I can't wait to pick up her other books, The Gold Diggers and... There's something else that she's written. The Polygamist. Really, really can't wait. Thank you for this, Sunyat. Thank you for this. I felt seen in that book. Like there's one character who I felt is me. I felt, what do you mean? One of the sisters. And if you've read that book, can you guess which one? <laughs> I felt like one of the sisters was me. I felt so seen in that book. The one book that got my heart and another five out of five, I was so fortunate with, with my picks this time around is 
the death of Vivek OG. Oh, yo, 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 yo. This is a heartbreaking, harrowing, pull at your, like, heart strings, 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 every single part of you book. This follows, I mean, already the title of the book can tell you, right? This follows the life of Vivek Oji. And this story is told from different perspectives. So, but not too many. It's literally uh, the, the, the perspective of essentially Osita, who is Vivek's cousin, and Vivek. And masterfully written. Incredibly well written. The writing was just magnificent. It was so, so good. Um, Akwaike Maisie. Yo, guys, I can't. It's told so. So let me. It follows the life of Vivek OG, and it's essentially a story of you know uh, becoming an identity and uh, belonging and not feeling like you belong, and without telling the story because I don't want to tell the story, but I want to also employ you to get this book and read it. It is painful. So it follows his life. And of course, the title is what it says, The Death of Vivek Oji. So yes, Vivek is found dead. They burned down the market on the day Vivek Oji died. And he's found by his mother. And, oh man, I don't want to say. I don't want to say. I really don't want to say. But it's, it's harrowing, it's beautiful, it's, it's choosing to own who you are and accept it and not wanting to be silenced for it and wanting to live in your truth. And Vivek was that. I just, I feel like if you are somebody who is unsure of, of you know, your life, your place in the world, um your identity i really implore you to read this book it's 245 pages i knocked this book out in two days and it was incredible i really really i really implore you to read it i don't want to talk too much about it because i feel like um i'll be taking away from the story i want you to read this book definite five out of five <sighs> there were moments where i cried i can tell you that right now i cried and I, I, I ugly cried, you know, like taking a book and like <laughs> going off, but so worth it. Masterpiece. So I am going to share with you my top, <laughs> this is hard. It was very, very hard for me to get to this decision, but I'm going to share with you my top three books of the year. So if there are books that I feel you should read, even going into next year and all of that, these would be those books. My favorite top three books of 2020, 20, I almost said 2020, 20, what do you even mean? <laughs> That's how quick I want 2020 to go, but I'm filming this in 2020, okay? My top three favorite books that I read in 2020 are all by women. And here we go. The first one is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Again, a masterfully well, incredibly well written book. I talk about this in my previous wrap up and it follows the life of Lydia, who was born into a Chinese American family to a mother, to a uh, blonde mother and a Chinese father. And also, again, talks about family dynamics, the struggles of, you know, always um, parents always wanting you to be perfect and all of that. And it follows essentially the life of Lydia. It's incredibly well written. If you want a more detailed um, explanation of what the book is about, please do watch my previous wrap up because I do talk about it in detail. But I loved this because of how it was written and because of essentially um men it touched me a lot because I, I i felt 
a connection to Lydia. I was drawn to Lydia so much uh, with um, some of the things that she went through, you know, because of her parents and always having to be perfect and all of that. I, I loved it. I loved it. The next book that I loved was this one. And I spoke about this book again in my previous wrap up. This is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. Again, another sim just symbolically, lyrically, masterfully written book. 150 pages long, literally. Uh, 190 pages long, but so much was packed into this book. This book follows the life of Melody and it's generational. So it doesn't necessarily only follow Melody, but it follows, follows her mother, Iris, and her grandparents as well. And just decisions that were taken within the family throughout all those multiple generations that got them to where they are, that influenced, um, you know, or how they were raised and how it influenced their decision making. And, you know, f connections or even non-connections with, um, you know, family members. I don't want to, I don't want to give away who wasn't connected to who, so that kind of thing. But... It was beautiful. Again, followed family dynamics, which I really, really loved. Um, yeah, followed a black American family, and it was so, 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 so beautifully well written. Again, it's in my previous wrap-up video, so if you want to see more detail about this book, much, much more detail, then I do suggest you get it. I must say... <laughs> I must say, I feel like I wouldn't be doing myself justice and you guys justice for these videos because this, oh man, uh, I have never felt more connected to a book in my life. Not because of just the one character who I felt like she was me. She is me. I am her. I see her. What do you even mean? Okay. Not because of that, but because of family and black families and what we go through and secrets and lies and this it was masterful and everything about how it was written as well i pay attention to how books are written i pay attention to the language the grammar i'm not perfect at those kinds of things i wouldn't call myself a writer or or, or a reading a write, reading critic or something like that whatever they call them I wouldn't call myself that, but I pay attention and I and and I love to see a book that just flows. It doesn't there's no disconnect. This book in 400 and something pages did that. It flew. It was a page turner. It was just like, "What?" There were so many topics and subtopics to those topics that just made me think, "So, what are you doing to me?" And I read it and I that's it. That's it. I, I definitely would reread this. This is not a book that I would borrow someone. I would probably buy a good friend of mine or a family member or whatever, a book like this. And I feel like men can also read this book because they will relate. There will be certain things that they would relate to as well, especially black um, African men. Oh, oh. All right. That's it from me. This is my last book video of the year we're gonna start new uh i am currently reading the vanishing half it's in my kitchen sitting way over there um i am currently reading the vanishing half by brit bennett and again 100 pages in but masterfully written i feel like i've picked really good books this year and so far tally wise i'll have to count i'm not quite sure how many books i've read so far maybe maybe just under 20 i think and if I have touched 20, I'm very proud of myself because that's the goal I wanted. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the book segment this year. And if you'd like to see more book segments in the following year, let me know. If you still want to join the BR, BSR, <laughs> the BSR book club, definitely let me know as well down below or DM me on Instagram. It's a quick way to get to me. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Mwah. Bye.